Death and Santa by Chris Mendham Read by Steve Parker A bone-loosening bass beat kicked Swedish death out through the doors of the old bull and bush. Brain jangling, he slipped on the pavement, dropping his chest set. Pieces spilling over the fake snow, landlord Bob insisted on scattering outside the pub every Christmas Eve. Jesus! exclaimed Swedish death. What? growled the man, dragging a huge wooden cross over his left shoulder. He had a dark brown complexion and wore a grubby bathrobe, sandals and a festive wreath of holly and ivy on his head. Startled, Swedish death looked up. Aren't you a bit premature? I don't think so, said the man dragging the cross. Okay. Swedish death, deciding he'd interacted enough with this weirdo, ignored him and carried on retrieving the chess pieces. The man carrying the cross huffed, rightly irritated that some passive-aggressive, self-righteous, disapproving ignoramus in a silly death costume judged him like he was some sort of weirdo. You don't seem to get it, he said, as if he were the only one to give a damn. The earth is burning! Ice caps are melting, driving polar bears onto the streets of a city near you! I am your salvation in this world gone rotten. Oh, I get it all right. However, my salvation resides in that pub, somewhere in the middle of a pint of its finest ale. The man with the cross, realizing he wasn't going to get any joy from death, plodded off into the night, forsaking the man scrabbling about in fake snow. For the past five Christmas Eves, the fancy dress party at the old bull and bush had forced locals to stay away. It was too noisy, they said, too packed. They played music that didn't have proper lyrics, like the old songs. And the young invading the pub were far too optimistic. And so, on this night for the past five years, Swedish death had let his feelings be known. He'd shaved off his hair, whitened his whole head, worn a heavy black cowl, and, instead of the classic scythe, he'd carried a chess set. It implied more about his character, he thought. He'd burst into the fray, downed as many pints as he could, all the while lambasting landlord Bob for pandering to commercialism before being unceremoniously expelled from the pub by hired muscle and barred for another year. Finding the last white pawn, Swedish death thought about returning to the party to fight the good fight and maybe nick someone's drink. Through frosted glass, red and white abstract shapes jiggled, bounced and jumped, nothing but sexy Santas allowed. Swedish death sighed tucked the chess set under his arm and trudged home through the unreasonably warm winter night, making new and critically devastating plans for next year's Christmas Eve party. Two streets over, as he cut down an alleyway, he got the shock of his life. he just felt the spirit of Christmas enter him as he thought about his Christmas dinner for one he'd purchased from the all-night petrol station, when Santa fell out of the sky. Santa crash-landed not two feet from Swedish death, hitting the ground with a pop. Blood and gore burst from the sides of his ample belly, splattering up the grimy walls and over Swedish death's cowl. Swedish death stood dumbfounded, partly at his own good fortune, but mostly at Santa's catastrophic misfortune. Looking up into the strip of clouded night sky, slung heavily between two grimy Victorian buildings, Swedish death swore he heard jingly bells and reindeer grunting and barking. How could I know what reindeer sound like? He thought, and put the sound barrage down to alcohol. Crouching beside Santa, Swedish death pulled out his phone. Battery dead. Typical. Santa groaned. Beyond reason, he was still alive! His beard, plastered with blood, came unglued and hung off his face like a drunken ferret. Hold on, mate, said Swedish death, as if by words alone he could prolong life. I'm going to get help. Santa pushed a present towards Swedish death and mustered the last of his strength. <coughs> Deliver to little Tony by midnight. He then squeezed out the address with the last of his breath. 
Oh, he lives in a pub. Lucky boy, said Swedish Death, digging deep down in the lining of his cowl to recover a long-lost pen. Could you give me the address again? He said with serious embarrassment. Santa mustered another last breath, laced with bitterness and condensed irritation, and repeated the address. Then he died. Swedish Death stared at the present. Shouldn't he get help or something, tell a police officer, rather than deliver a present? However, wouldn't he, if he lay dead grasping a present, want someone to deliver that last Christmas gift to his son, nephew, whoever? Knowing my luck, he thought. If I had a son, he'd have been whisked off thousands of miles away to the U.S. or to some other improbable place by his vindictive mother, and I'd only get to see him every few years, depending on how long I could hold down a job. Which currently wasn't very long. Sighing, he shook <sighs> off the accidental fantasy. Did he need a convoluted backstory anyway? Couldn't he just do this one act of redemption, of kindness? Something to give this moment meaning. Well, that all sounds like bollocks, he said. He looked at Santa's watch. It was broken. Understandably. Adding five minutes from impact, Swedish death had forty minutes to trek across the city to an address twenty-five minutes away. Easy, by taxi. The streets swirled like a dance floor, with happy, jolly drunks slogging it out from one pub to the next. Swedish death struggled against the flow, constantly beaten back by joy to the world and goodwill to all men. He gave it up once he realized no taxi would penetrate the throng. He cut through an alleyway to try his luck on the next street over. Passing a Mercedes parked up, driver side door ajar, engine running, he ducked inside and checked the time on the dashboard clock. 11.45. Damn it, where had the time gone? He didn't take that train of thought any further because it inevitably led to the question, where had my life gone? He spied the keys in the ignition and a bad thought forced itself to the front of his brain. No, he couldn't hijack a car just to deliver a Christmas present. Could he? Sliding onto the plush driver's seat, he placed the present and his chest set onto the passenger side and gripped the wheel. Reaching over to shut the door, Someone grabbed him by the hood. Dragged out, he was flung against the wall, knocking all the oxygen out of his blood. A steel-hardened fist buried itself deep in his stomach, followed by a concrete thump to the side of his head. Swedish death crumbled, gasping for breath, crunching his nose into the filth-smeared pavement. An ugly, burning face, veins fit to burst at the temples, screamed obscenities and spit. With a final kick up the arse, the ugliness flung himself into his car, throwing the present and the chess set at his latest rage victim before hurtling away to no doubt spread more misery and joylessness. Swedish death came too, surrounded by a group of clubbers, all sparkly, bright and wobbly with giggle levels of alcohol flooding their brains. Some must have thought he was a tramp, as they'd stuffed his left hand with tens and twenties. Feeling woozy, Swedish Death gestured to the present and the address he'd scrawled upon it. I gotta get it uh, there oh, by midnight. One of the clubbers, a young, lively fellow, unfettered by the cynicism that comes neatly packaged as a special treat with time, flagged down a taxi. However, the guy he stopped insisted he wasn't a taxi, but the young chap was having none of it. You have to help. It's Christmas, man. He has, like, a little kid. Look, he bought him a present and everything. And he lives in a pub, which is so cool. Listen, mate, I'm not a... Then the driver spied the wad of cash in Swedish Death's hand. The taxi driver, who wasn't a taxi driver, screeched to a halt a few streets later and dragged his unwanted passenger out by the legs, Swedish Death making a desperate grab for the present. The taxi driver, who wasn't a taxi driver, dumped him by overflowing bins, snatched the money from Swedish Death's fist, and drove off. Well, thought Swedish Death, I may have lost my dignity, and possibly more blood than anyone has a right to lose on Christmas Eve, but at least I still have the present. 
Looking down, he saw only the chess set lying forlorn and apologetic in his lap. What does he do now? Go home? That would make the most sense. But he'd promised Santa. But had he, though? It was more a promise to himself about a hope for a son who existed only in a fanciful daydream. Yet right now, despite the daydream being rubbish, it was a better prospect than anything else in his life. So what did he have to lose? Scrabbling in the bins, he found newspaper, a sheet of torn birthday paper, and a pile of elastic bands discarded by a postman. Wrapping the chess set in newspaper and strips of birthday paper, he held the car crash together with elastic bands. An hour later, Swedish death arrived at his final destination, the Flag and Bugle pub. It looked like the inside of a cancerous lung turned inside out. It was dark and abandoned, boarded up. No one had pulled a pint for a long, long time. Hearing voices around the back, Swedish Death went to investigate. He pushed open two wide wooden gates and walked into a yard full of wood stacked up on all sides. Ahead, he saw lights on in a large outbuilding. Entering, he witnessed six Santas gathering around a table piled high with Christmas presents. The middle of the outbuilding had been cleared to accommodate the table, because, just like the pub yard, Planks of wood covered every wall, stacked and leaned neatly. Wood even hung from the ceiling. The Santas ripped off the Christmas paper to reveal white packages, which they stacked like a brick wall. These Santas were not sexy Santas like those in the old bull and bush. One had dark, crusty blood all down the front of his costume, from a deep cut on the side of an already ragged face. Swedish death cleared his throat. <clears> throat. The Santas turned to face him. It was like a pack of wolves had caught the scent of blood on the wind. I'm here for... Uh, little Tommy. A thought struck him. What was he going to say to the little chap? I'm sorry your favorite uncle slash much older brother slash father is dead, but he wanted you to have this... this cheap chess set. Oh, bollocks. Who's this? said a harsh but strangely familiar voice from the shadows. He better have the package. Swedish death held out the present. Bloody face snatched it, his eyes not leaving Swedish death, not even to blink. It's for little Tommy, insisted Swedish death. Out from behind a stack of planks stepped a short, stocky man in an immaculate tuxedo and an expression that could crush granite. Landlord Pop? Swedish death felt confusion wrap him in a filthy blanket. Where's little Tommy? Who? The name we used on all the packages, boss, said Bloody Face. Landlord Bob jabbed a nicotine-stained finger at Swedish death. Who the fuck is this ass monkey? Must be Colin, boss, said Bloody Face. Swedish death, a cloud of sweat, alcohol and disappointment hanging heavy on his shoulders, couldn't conceal his hurt. Colin? No, I'm from the old bull and bush. You know, like in that old movie where the fella plays chess with death. What the twisted bollock is he talking about? An old Bergman movie, boss said Bloody Face. What? No idea, boss. Good. Bloody Face ripped the wrapping off the present and showed the chess set to Landlord Bob. What the shit nell has he brought me? scowled Landlord Bob. A chess set, boss, said Bloody Face. I can see that, you stunted prick. Where's the package? The cocaine? And why is he not dressed as Santa? What is going on? I want product, not problems. No command was issued, but all six Santas took a step towards Swedish death, each pulling out some ugly-looking implement of torture. Everything stopped when, behind Swedish death, a man arrived with a cross. Oi! What are you lot doing in my pub? he admonished. Hey, you better not have touched my crosses. Landlord Bob looked perplexed and apoplectic with rage, the two emotions twisting his face like a kid mixing two brightly coloured lumps of plasticine. 
Who the fuck puppy is this? That's Jesus, boss, said Bloody Face. Swedish Death glanced at the man and his cross, then at the wood all around him. Not simple planks, but crosses, hundreds of them, each over two meters high, each leaning precariously against the walls. Without thinking, Swedish Death barged into the man and his cross. Toppled by the weight on his shoulder, the man and his cross crashed into the nearby pile of crosses. These crosses in turn fell onto the next stack and began a chain reaction as stack after stack collapsed like dominoes. Landlord Bob and the Santas watched hypnotized, following the collapsing crosses around the outbuilding, until they started to fall inward like a flower closing its petals at night. Unable to avoid the inevitable, their big padded bellies hampering any chance of escape, the unsexy Santas went down, one by one, in a dissonance of broken limbs and cracked skulls. Screaming with fury, Landlord Bob ran forward, but a cross clouted him on the shoulder, bringing him to his knees. Still, he kept coming, hurling abuse. Behind that first cross, ten more fell on Landlord Bob, and he went down with a curse for each one striking him, the last silencing him for good. Swedish Death stared agog at what he'd done. He turned to the man, now without a cross. Uh, why so many crosses? he asked. Eventually, one for everyone on the planet. But that's over seven billion people. That's why we have to plant more trees. Hmm. The string holding up the crosses in the ceiling snapped, and down they came, smashing the pile of cocaine, sending up a huge, bulbous white cloud. It's a Christmas miracle, said the man without a cross, as Swedish Death dragged him out of the building ahead of the cocaine cloud. Picking him up, they ran from the pub. As he ran, Swedish Death pulled off his cowl and used it to wipe the white makeup off his head. I vow, he said, to sort my life out. Get a job, find a wife, have a kid, and only ever drink in family-friendly pubs. I told you I was your salvation, said the man without a cross. This has been Death and Santa by Chris Mendon, read by Steve Parker.